out, you know, hide and hunker down and put a thing, a new thing that's just just run. If you can run, run. Even to Have a special meeting just to approve the minutes. Yeah, and show up. <laughs> that would be good. Mandatory special meeting. We're not recording, right? Yeah, we are because we thought we were starting. That's right. We're not on the record. <laughs> not on the record. Okay, gotcha. I can play Rosemary Woods. <laughs> that could be. Is it? Do we have to reset this, or is this? No. But sometimes it goes off, and then he comes and has it come back on. It's usually our cutest term. Yeah, exactly. I can read things now. to call to order the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Regular Meeting, July 13, 2023. Please join me in saluting the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to introduce the members of the commission seated here today. Uh, to my immediate left is Bill Galdenzi, our vice chair of the commission. To his left is Scott Lanza, an alternate member of the commission. And to his left is Barry Ponders, another alternate member to the commission. To my far right is Janet Crane, our recording secretary. And at the administrative table seated here today is Dave Perkins, our town planner. And my name is Bob Nowak. I'm the chairman for the commission this evening. For the record, Barry and Scott will be regular members, voting members on the commission to see this, this evening instead of alternate members. Next order of business is to consider the approval of our minutes from October 6th, April 20th, May 4th, and June 15th. October 6th was Bill, Ron, and Chuck. So we're kind of not able to do that one. Uh, April 20th is myself, Bill, Scott, and Barry. We're going to work on that one. Uh, May 4th is Bill, Chuck, and Scott. Uh, that one is uh, going to be tabled along with October 6th. Uh, and last but not least, June 4th, uh, June 15th. Uh, we're going to table that one as well. It looks like uh, we don't have enough members. So with that being said, take a moment to review the minutes. Um, and any commission member, let me know any additions, corrections, or adjustments to the minutes. And then I entertain a motion to approve the minutes when you are ready. And those are the minutes of, of 
April 20th. April 20th. Oh, yeah. April 20th. April 20th. I, mean, I have no further comments, but okay. these guys respond. So, Jim, we're going to table October 6th, April 20th. Uh, April 4th and June 15th. Thank you. Here and Carol Regan. Yeah. So, yeah. so the only comment I have, Jenna, regarding that um, meeting, uh, bullet number six, other business, cannabis and other zoning regs updates. The town planner, the town planner Perkins, met with the town manager and stated that there are people who want to speak on allowing cannabis in town. I think it's not allowing cannabis in town. Yes. Or yep. speak about cannabis in town. Oh, they were all very against it. Yeah. They were against it. So no, they were against it, it, right? Yeah, but So if we could say to speak on not allowing cannabis and we're not in town, not in, yeah, not allowing <laughs> cannabis in town. Oh. Yeah. All right, entertain a motion to approve the minutes April 20th yeah, I mean, as revised. I, rem I move to approve the minutes of the April 20th, 2023 meeting as revised. We have a second? Second. Okay, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Four to zero. We're all there. Yay. All right. So April 20th is approved. Okay. Next item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing and possible action. So a public hearing uh, application 2023-6 Forest Road to Tucker Mountain and Forest Road Rear. Uh, the purpose of the meeting uh, is to hear any pertinent testimony of those in support of in opposition to the application before the commission. Procedure to be followed by, for the public hearing item tonight would be the public hearing be open, testimony be heard in the following order. Applicant explaining their proposal project, the staff commissioner's question and comment, general public will have an opportunity to speak in support of in opposition to the request. An applicant, applicant has an opportunity to read to respond to all to all comments. When you're asking commission, please come up to the microphone and begin by stating your name and address. When all sides have spoken, the public hearing will be closed and no further discussion will be entertained. After the public hearing is closed, the commission will vote on the request. I'd ask um, Phil, would you mind reading the public notice into the record? Okay, this was um Legal ad in the sound on Thursday, June 29th, 2023, and July 6th, 2023. Legal notice, North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission. Notice is hereby given that the North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, July 13th, 2023, at the North Brantford Town Hall, 909 Fox and Road, North Brantford, Connecticut, to consider the following. A, application 2023-6. Temporary special use permit request under section 43 and section 23, schedule A, use line D1 for grading and placement of soil and fill on property located at Forest Road, Tertucket Mountain, and Forest Road Rear. Owner, Tilcon Incorporated, applicant James Preddy, PE, Chris Cole Engineering, LLC. At this hearing, all interest persons may appear and be heard and written communications will be received. Copies of proposals are filed for public inspection in the Town Hall Planning Department. Robert Nowak, Chairman. Thank you, Bill. Is the applicant here? Yeah. Okay. Well, state your name and your address for it. Record, please. Sure. Uh, James Preddy, uh, Chris Golo Engineering, 420 East Main Street in Brantford. Um, here representing Tilcon. Also with me is Chris Costello from Tilcon. Um, we're basically looking to extend the permit that they already have. Um, we, we've been here before with this, nothing's changed. They need more time. Um, 
as you can imagine, I mean, this is at this scale, this is a little deceiving, but it's a very large area. And they take the soils as they need to remove them and place them here. So it's not a, it's not an everyday occurrence. So they need more time to, for the permit. Um, and really the only reason that we need to keep coming back is because these two properties are actually zone, uh, they're in a residential zone. Uh, we did try to amend them into the quarry zone, but that didn't fly. So here we, we so we need to keep coming back every year for this. But it's not, it's not a new blasting area that, that has its own permit application uh, when they, you know, uh, when they do their five-year mining plan. This is just, it's just the placement of overburden soils in this area. And you provide us. I, I did send those along that you can see that, you know, as they, as they do it, they flatten it out. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not like a big pile, a hill pile. And then in one of those pictures, you could quite clearly see the wood chip berm um, that goes around the outside of it. Um, and I believe last year, um, I think Victor was up there last year and inspected it. So I was, I was a little, I, I think that his comment would, might have just been a <laughs> copy and paste from, because he was up there last year and right. se had seen it. Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I remember the application, the original one. Yeah. So this is the third go round. Well, actually, I believe last year we had to go through this as if it was original because it had expired. Yeah. Right. Oh. So last year would have been a restart, but this is the third time for the same thing, yes. Right. And what change in elevation since third time go around? Uh, I don't know. Could you have a sense for how high you are? How, how uh, from the ground, how far up they fell? 15, 20 feet? Maybe. I mean, it's going pretty slow, so they're probably, elevation's probably not much, not much higher. Yeah, I mean, based on the pictures there, I don't, I don't think it's more than 10 yeah. feet, 10 or 12 feet there. Yeah. Right. So I, I'm just curious, because I, I was, I don't know who was even on the commission then, probably everyone. Right. I, I, it wasn't my, I, not that it makes a big difference, but I just try to understand. When you originally presented, my, my understanding was you're going to bring it, and I, I didn't know that it was going to be brought over time. So, so it's is that is that soil. that was always the original plan? There's yeah. nothing to change. The plan has not changed. It's just taking Correct. longer. Okay. It just takes longer. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not all in one place for the gravity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. as they sure. strip the soil off of the rock. Gotcha. They, yeah. they bring it there. Right. Okay. Any idea how long you anticipate it? It's hard to tell, right? It's hard yeah, to tell. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. At least a couple more years. I mean, the process is a little cumbersome. <laughs> uh, you know, the, uh, they need to do this. You guys have approved this, but just because I think because of the zone, we're, we're here every year. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the change in elevation from last year to the, from six months ago to, to this year? A uh, couple feet. Well, maybe? from last year, last year it started, right? Right. Yeah, they started. Well, they started two years ago, but they don't do this all year. So I believe they just started this month. So I don't think there's a big change. What's our, our final tally for height? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, about 55 feet total. 55 feet. In the more. center, but this, you know, it kind of it pyramids up, so. Sure, sure. And we're up maybe 10, 12 feet, so that's a long way to go to get yeah. to 55 feet. But the footprint gets smaller the higher yeah, it goes. Yeah, Sure, yeah. sure. Any complaints from the neighbors? Does anybody, can anybody see this mound of dirt or? Where this is if, in the if, residential area, I I, I have been there only because somebody from Till kind of brought me there, but even with the map and a compass, it would be hard to find. It's it's way up in the woods, at the north end of the quarry. Oh, the north end of the quarry. Yeah, oh, so wow. it's it's quite a ways north. It's, if you've never been up there before, I mean, it's deceiving how how long the quarry really is. Right from the face. I mean, know where the face is right now, the, yeah. the quarry face. Yeah, from the face, it's well, a couple hundred yards. A couple right? hundred yards more, yeah. Beyond that, beyond the face, right? Yeah. And that's where the hmm. you strip the overburden off from the face and dump it there? Yes. More right. or less. And there's nothing else you can do with those materials? No, well, we keep them because when end of life, we'll spread that back out and it'll vegetate. That's, that's the reason we keep it. 
Gotcha. Makes sense. Nice. That'll be a, another project. Yeah. yeah. Plus, this is an area. I mean, this is ideal for this only because they can't do any mining on these parcels. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yep. I think that was a concern initially that people thought right. blasting yeah. and stuff, but it was clarified that no right. blasting. And that's why it stays residential? That's why it did not get yeah. the zone change approval. Okay. Any way to regulation change to, to allow these this to continue instead of seeing him another six months? Not that we don't like you, but... <laughs> You see him all the time. Though. Yeah, we see him all the time. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. I would think this is probably the best way to do it. Okay. I think we're open a can of worms if we start yeah. trying to yep. do different things. There is a comment by the um, town engineer that just talks about erosion control. Um, I have no comments. It's not a development. It seems to be, from the pictures, it seems to be under control. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't I don't have any, any questions no? or further comments. At this point. We'll, right. We'll put it to the public, but Okay. Dave, you have anything to add? No. Okay. Thank you, James. So at this Thank point you. in time. Okay. So at this point in time we'll open up to uh, public comment. Anybody who's in uh, um, support of the filling operation for Tilcon on the top of the mountain? And we have pictures if anybody would like to see them. That's a question, just since we're talking about public comment. Does this have to get noticed? The, yeah, the 500 feet. Yeah, okay. I thought so. Not 500. Not 500. So just a special use permit. So it's just the okay. Do we have the. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. The, your, the zone change was 500 feet. That's yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Got it. So hearing none on support of anybody against it, public comment, more than willing to come up and talk about approving <coughs> it. Hearing none, then I'll, uh, I move, uh, I'll entertain a motion to cl close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing for application 2023-6. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. We have a motion with a second. Any discussion on closing the public hearing? Okay. Then the public hearing is closed. So with that being said, moving on to um, motion to approve the application as presented. I'd like to take a motion to approve it. Um, I have a um, proposed motion. Yeah. Excellent. You do the honors. Please. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On oh, my glasses. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Hey, no standard. Uh, no. Uh, all standard conditions, right? No special conditions. No, uh, no just a normal. Uh, just there's 15. I'll read 15, though. Uh, and 16. Approved planning and zoning application 2023-6 temporary special use permit request under section 43 excavation grading removal or filling and section 23a use line d1 for grading and placement of soil and fill on property located at forest road totucket mountain and forest road rear map 52a lots 12 and 14 r80 zone owner tilcon inc applicant james pretty pe school engineering llc as described in submitted application and shown on the following map and drawing. Uh, the proposed grading plan for overburdened soils properties located at Forest Road, 
Rear and Totucket Mountain, North Granford, Connecticut, prepared by Criscola Engineering LLC, dated January 4th, 2021, with the following standard conditions. 1C24, 1C24891517, 17, and special conditions 23, 22, 23, and 24. Just for the record, I'll read the special, the special conditions 22. All conditions under zoning regulation section 43.4 standards shall be adhered to. Special condition 23, no screening, washing, crushing, etc., shall be performed on the site. And special condition 24, hours of operation shall be conducted from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. There shall be no operations conducted on legal holidays, Saturdays, or Sundays. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. A second. Scott, we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Okay, then I move to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries 4 0. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number five, which is old business. Uh, there is none. Uh, number six is new business, and it's application 2023-7275 Branford Road B2 zone. Is the applicant here to talk about the project? I'm here representing the applicant. Okay. <laughs> Applicants out of state. Uh, your name and your address? Janice Mendillo, 12 Tanglewood Drive in Branford. Okay. Um, Dr. Mendillo lives on Beach Street in North Branford. Gotcha. And today we're doing a site plan for changing the medical building to a veterinarian, correct? It's Marcus Law Firm building. Marcus Law Firm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. To a veterinary clinic, yes. Was there anything that uh, was gonna change on the property? Anything different? Nothing has changed. Well, we have some interior modifications that need to be made, but it's windows and adding a couple of interior doors. But other than that, no, structurally, there's no difference. No difference, right? The whole floor plan change doesn't, the floor plan- The floor plan is, is basically over. staying the same, opening up a couple of spaces, but basically it's staying the same. Okay. And the site plan is exactly the same. There's no exterior changes. Correct. At this point in time. Correct. If there are any, they're minor. So at the time that it was approved, Dave, was there, um, is there any requirement to, for that. lighting or anything like that that was already approved back in the day for that there, site plan? Does, does the applicant need to update that or provide it the, if it's not? The applicant should update the parking striping Yes. yes. In the way the parking's laid out. Everything is sort of overgrown and a little bit old and <laughs> it, it just needs to be freshened up. Okay. If you look at the site plan, there's sort of a strange parking behind the building right. where there's sort of five spaces that are at the end of the parking area and then there are five spaces that are in front of them. So if you were in the back spaces and somebody was in front of you, you can't get out. Um, I, I assume that the idea was that the lawyers would park there and work from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. and the customers would come and go. Um, I don't think there were any issues with the volume of parking in the lot, but that was the site plan that was approved. Yeah, can, can I add a question back, maybe backing up to the original site plan? So. We, they can use the original site plan as long as there's no change. I, I, I thought I thought to Bob's point, I thought he was making his, so I'm just making this up because I don't know when Marcus was approved, but if, say it was 20 years ago, you know, there may be more current standards and stuff. Do they have to do something updated? I don't want to make it complicated. I'm just, it's a really just an innocent question. Like, do they have to come with something that reflects current well, requirements and I things would, like that? I would go back to the, the our regulation 41.5 okay. that says 
a change in use of land or in the use of a structure will require commission approval of a site plan if such change in use increases the required amount of parking, loading, or access, or requires substantial alteration to the land structure or building. Good. So I don't think they even need to be here. Yeah. Okay. I. You answered my question. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I, I I think that I could have approved this because mm -hmm. the law firm use requires the same amount of parking as a veterinary yeah. use. Perfect. And they're not doing any, you know, substantial alteration. Yeah. No, we I love those great interior areas. things around. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I Minor understand. changes in the use of occupancy of land structure not requiring additional parking, loading, mm -hmm. or access will not require site plan yeah. approval. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. I agree. But we're here anyway. Just we're here anyway. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Any questions, comments? That was crystal clear. That was my question and it was answered. Yep. Okay. All right, with that being said. Um, so wait, I have another one. Yeah, thank you, sir. How about this one's this random one's short. question. Um, she mentioned like the addition of doors on the inside. I know that doesn't really have anything to do with us, but does that change fire regulations? Mm. Oh yeah, with fire marshal in the building, yeah, yeah. people will all be involved in. Okay, I'm gonna go. I move to approve planning and zone application 2023-7. Site plan request under section 23, schedule A use C4 veterinary hospitals for the change of use from law firm to a veterinary clinic at 275 Brantford Avenue. Accessors map 12, lot one, zone B2. Owner Mendillo Veterinary Services, LLC. Applicant Sarah M. Odell as contained in submitted application documents and shown on plans and specifications. The following standard conditions, two. And special conditions, no special conditions. I'll just read, there's only one, I'll read it. <laughs> standard condition two, that this site plan approval shall be null and void if construction site improvements are not completed within five years of this approval, date effective date unless time is extended by commission as allowed by the Connecticut General Statutes. So that's standards. Thank you, Bill. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Okay, any discussion? None here. Yeah. Nope. Okay, hearing none, then uh, all in favor say aye to the application 2023-7. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? None. Abstentions? None. Motion carries. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Building. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. So, number seven, other business zoning regulation updates. Senator Q or mine? Our. Which one you want to start with? Whatever, wherever you want to start with the chart. Let's take June. We have the draft um, multifamily housing district regulations. Do you want to look at those? People need copies? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to pull it down from your email. From last uh, month, we had several different zoning regs. We were talking about signage, Route 22, 50 Clipper Road, zoning reg changes, bulk. Um, Dave was so kind enough to put together a <coughs> draft of a multifamily yeah. housing district that we've been talking about for about a year. Yeah. Um, it touches on all the normal regulations, standards, that we were talking about from last year. He incorporated a lot of our changes that we had um, talked about. So, just 
just as a, a point, Dave, an overlay district, could you explain that for us one more time? An overlay, just you're taking, just like the Northwood district, this is gonna be placed wherever we choose to put it, or someone asked to be put it? A, 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 flo a floating zone may be located on an appropriate lot in an appropriate district subject to your legislative decision that it's an appropriate place for it to land. You're not required to allow a floating zone to land if it's not appropriate for the location. Um, you, you can, you're, you're acting legislatively at that point, not administratively, which means that you don't have to follow any sort of administrative regulations. You can say, I just don't like it because it shouldn't be there. End of story. End of story. Even if it meets all the checks, all the boxes on in this, we can Correct. say no. It's just like somebody coming in and saying, you know, I live in a residential zone and I want to change it to an industrial zone. And you can say, well, that's not appropriate because of what you're going to be doing in the property. So the same thing in this case, you can say it's not appropriate because it's it just doesn't fit into the character of the town. There's that word character again. He used it. <laughs> he did it. He did it. He did it. I, I don't see I don't see them as necessarily analogous to what you just said because in, in it, doing an industrial zone in a residential zone is not allowed. There's nothing on their books that say it's allowed, right? This actually codifies sort of that we have something that could be used. So can't well, someone argue, can't someone argue saying, well, what do you mean? I have I'm less than 10 acres, I'm 200, whatever, you know, I meet, I met the boss when I make, I meet all these checks and, and we can say, no, sorry, we don't, we don't agree. Correct. And then, and then someone else could come and say, it would be maybe a, obviously a different situation and maybe it was more favorable. We could say, yeah, that seems reasonable. That to me seems like cherry picking a little bit. Well, you're, you're allowed to do that. Okay. I didn't, I never you're, realized You're that. making up the rules. Okay. And I, all I was saying about the industrial zone is that, that there is an industrial zone. True, yeah, you, you're right, true. As a regulation, yeah, that right. they can ask it to be placed anywhere. Yeah, right, yeah, you're right, true, okay. Like, like the Quarry District that we just talked about. You know, they wanted to change those residential zones to the Quarry District, and yeah. it was a budding and everything else, it would make sense hmm. to do it. It's accessory use to the quarry operation by putting the soils there, it would make sense to change that. Yeah. Hmm. But you guys said no, which you're allowed to do. If it was a special permit, then you don't have a choice. Because as long as they check the boxes on a special permit, then you are acting administratively yeah, okay. and you have to approve it. Yeah, but we can, we have a little more latitude on the special use stuff. You have more than, than latitude than the site plan, floating than the straight. zone, you have complete Complete, control. yeah, I never, okay, but I learned something new. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. And then they have to come back with a site plan and uh, everything else that adheres to the requirements. Yeah, interesting, okay. After you bless the floating zone. Hmm. So it's a two-tier process. All right. One of our homework assignments was to try to get to the, uh, the site in Brantford where Margaritas used to be. Oh yeah, sure. They're yeah. developing oh, yeah, that. Sure. Are. Twenty yeah. units per acre. Yeah. I didn't get a chance oh, wow. to look by it or drive by it. What did you think of that development or that uh, uh, housing complex? I mean, I've been driving by it since they've been building it. So I just always say, like, well, what's going on? My father lives in Brantford. I grew up in Brantford, so I know the area well. Uh, I, what I, I think I like, because we've talked about it here, is to, to build things in front so parking's in the back, you know, so you don't have parking lots in the front. I think they've done mostly that, right? Mm -hmm. There's units in the front right against the road. Uh, I, I, I drive by it not really consciously looking for Sure, from sure. a zoning perspective, so I can certainly do it. Yeah. Okay. It's 
big. Yeah. Big, big project, that's for sure. So some of the... Um, How about, did you get through, Barry? I mean, I drive by there every day, yeah, yeah. to work. Yeah, um, exactly how Bill described it, you know. It's busy, you know what yeah. I mean, but a parking lot that goes in and out doesn't like two... It's nothing like Northford Center. You, you, exactly. There's one way to get in and one way to get out. That's exactly. And I, you know, if you put too much in there, I think that they have the perfect size. It's not going to be overly busy at any given time, yeah. even when they hit, have all these business up and running, and they should be able to. Traffic should move pretty easily. Um, so it's mixed use in the bottom. It's, it's a mixed like use four on the bottom. Store fronts in yep. the front. Yeah. Okay. I think it also is nice because it has um, public transportation. It obviously, has 95 right there, and I think there's a bus line, I believe, that runs that, yeah. that way. So that's ideal. That's always the challenge here, right? We don't have. Right, we don't have a transit. We don't have a transit. Yeah. Transit well, line. that's that's part of this proposal. Yeah. Is that it would have to be within a quarter mile of a transit oh. district or a proposed transit district stop i'm sorry transit right. stop and there is a proposed transit oh. stop cool. in front of firelight oh good cool. okay got it that's been approved by the legislature and it's in the budget and okay. it's ready to be built good sounds good so this district gets tied in within a quarter mile of a proposed or current transit district the only other transit station is at the high school Oh, that was, I didn't know you were that. Oh, yeah. It's a bus that goes to the high school. Good. Okay. Located adjacent to a state highway, right? right. Okay. Public water and sewer available within walking distance of other land use uh, zones. Less than five acres up to 10 acres is um, the proposal. Was there any particular why we chose or consider 10 acres as the uh, max? Should it be less than that, or you could always subdivide? There's options. I don't know. Well, you could always do one 10 acre lot and then another 10 acre lot and then another 10 acre lot. So, right, right. You okay. Just, you sort of. If you got 100 acres, you can break it into 10. Okay. Gotcha. As long as they have the frontage and everything else. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the idea was to Come discourage on. huge development. Yeah. Yeah, that scenario. It's probably better to have one in and out, though. You know, rather than that scenario, having two, three, two ten, three ten acres just to have one thirty acre. You know, but anyway. But I, I get you want to keep it limited, so ten. I get that. So what are the components and do we know I'm sorry yeah, no, go right ahead. do we know I mean we, we've looked at these like these uh, more dense housing to transition from industrial or residential in the past and things but we've always kind of looked at the zoning map just to get a sense for like how many areas like do we even apply do we have any idea because some we'll look at the zoning map and say I, if I think if only 10 sometimes there's only five that would even apply you know in the town so there would only be maybe five or 10 different lots, yeah. and most of them are are too big or too small, so they have to be subdivided or be combined yeah. okay. together. There's, there's a component in here about walking distance of other land uses, so if you can't walk down a road yeah. or, or get to the other land uses, then I think you're sort of out of luck. Um, I, I did do a map, and I didn't bring it, but I, I can present that map that has a big circle around the quarter mile. Um, that would be great if you could do that. Um, so the maximum is 20 units per acre on the net lot area. Right, and that's what the Brantford place looks like, with no building containing more than 16 units. Right, and I think I actually updated that to be 32 units. Per building? Yep. So 
20 units per acre, but you could have 32 units per building. Correct. So you just need to be two, two plus acres for that. Yeah, okay, got it. And that's the, if you look at the one I just handed you, um, This also a change from some of the previous discussions um, allows small scale retail service and restaurant uses with a gross footprint no larger than 10,000 square feet. So why not throw some retail in there? If they want to do the retail, they can do the retail. If they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. At least it gives them an option so it's not all residential because you have other businesses nearby and employment centers nearby, why not give them the ability to have some retail? Okay. Is there any, is there own lease rent? Does it matter? Right? It's when you, yeah. it's apartments, it's the apartments. What? Apartments, condos, does it, doesn't matter. We don't specify, right? It's whatever. Whatever. 20 units. Right. right. Yeah. Retail. Just yeah, they want to sell them, they want to rent them. Could it be hotel? No, hotel's a hotel. Yeah, okay. Hotel's a different beast. Like someone, like a corporation that would buy 10 rooms for their use. Say that yeah. again. Like a corporation that would buy 10 units for their use. And then as people came from other sites would could utilize those. Sure. That's, that's okay, right? They'd own them. Yeah. They could do what they want with them. Okay. Or they could rent them and keep them and. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been in other towns where there have been condominiums and corporations rent the condos and mm -hmm. people who come and visit can stay there for a week or two. Commission members, this is 39.6 development standards, uh, lot size to 200,000 to 10 acres, frontage 400 on the state highway, setbacks 25 feet, 40 side, 75 from the state highway. Doesn't it have to be on a state highway? The frontage doesn't have to be? Or it does? Just has to abut a state highway. Abut, okay. So it's 25 from the local street, 75 that abuts the state highway, okay? So I just know we had that, I'm just going back to this, because we spent a lot of time in this other one, this yes. one that transitioned. We did want frontage. I'm just envisioning in my head. So if you abut it, you don't have, and you're, dumping onto a small street. So you have 40 units now dumping on a forest, small street that then goes out to the state road. Could that happen? And is that, a, is that something we want? Well, I think that's something you can certainly address during the, the site plan and the conversation. Yeah. That would be one of the reasons for you to say, no, it's not a good place to land them. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, obviously thinking this through because it's it, just getting this, but I, I think that was one of the things we thought was positive that it's on a state road, so you can just exit out on a state road. From the local road? No. Oh, from the from site the, itself? I'm going back to the other, it's not this regulation, but a similar regulation where we had it, it had to have frontage and access onto the state road. So if you're doing a development with multiple buildings and units and things, they would go right onto the state road and not be dumping on smaller roads because then there's traffic concerns and things. I, your point, we can address it at the site plan. I just don't know if it's worth discussion and something we want to consider writing in. In other words, have the developer go right onto the state road instead of the local road. I think that was always, I think, a positive when we used the original. It was, wasn't the same regulation, but it was a similar regulation. It seemed reasonable if, if you're gonna do a bigger development with more intense, right, housing stock, that you can
can have a state road you're exiting out front. Um, That's fair. Just a comment, really. Our state route is 80, 139, 22, 17. 17, yeah. Right? That's mm -hmm. traverses the Especially entire town. The possibility of refill. <laughs> Right, basically, so, yeah, every state route. So, yeah, it's a good point. 35 foot box trucks going down yeah. neighborhoods. I wasn't even thinking of it. Um, yeah, that's a great point. If we're talking, you know. Yeah, if you're talking being able to put retail locations in these buildings, having an egress into uh, a side street to a neighborhood will prompt deliveries that go to the back of the building yeah. to use that side street. Right. So, you don't want. You don't want an 18 wheeler coming down yeah. somebody's neighborhood so they can, you know, enter through the back of the parking lot theoretically and go to the back of the building for a delivery. You would want that all to go through the, the state state road. I would think. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think the retail aspect of it. Yeah. So what aspect is that in this? That's egress, right? It's not necessarily a setback, but egress. Yes. Yeah, that's it's not a I'm not right. talking setback, yeah, exactly. It's right, yeah. That it, it has direct access to the state road or something like that. Right. Okay. That's a good idea. How do we feel about the twenty units per acre? All right, uh in our last meeting I think it was around five. Right now currently it's about five or six units per acre in town, four to five, I forget. Something like that, right, Dave? If I remember correctly? Yeah, Something pretty like much. That. Pretty much. So we're like tripling that quantity from... I mean, we have this six. We have this sort of cluster housing... Yeah, that's the... ...regulation that doesn't quite have that kind of density, but it's a little bit weird about how you could use it. I mean, you could come up with some pretty peculiar looking cluster developments based on the special permit applications. It's not even a zone change, it's just an overlay zone in the R40. And you could get, um, you can get 32 units on five acres. So what's that, six per acre? but they can be clustered. They can be as tight as you want. Gotcha. And you need to have 15 acres left over. So that's a cluster. But on those other 15 acres, you can also develop another 12 single family lots using up another seven or eight acres. So you still end up with a developed eight acres developed and eight acres open space, but you have a lot of density. Uh, this is quite different because it's just dense. Gotcha, so it's spread out. And we try to locate it so it's close to a, a industrial zone or, or, you know, it's not in the middle of a R40 zone. It's a transition zone. Yeah, that was good. the other one we had was a, the intent was for transition, exactly. You have industrial and residential, so you're transitioning from one to the other. So kind of just blends the two, you know, so to speak. There wasn't, there is not currently a state mandated Cur unit per acre. Correct, there are, no state, there are no state mandated. There were some suggestions, I, if I remember correctly, I don't remember precisely what they were toying with in the legislature, legislatures. It was approximately 20 units per acre. About 20 mm -hmm. units, okay. And that seems to be sort of the market rate number. And there's a 10% affordable housing piece to this. Yeah. And you get affordable housing in North Brantford is not cheap. Yeah. I mean, the rents are gonna be $1,800, $1,900 a month for an affordable unit in 2300 2400 for a market rate. Wow. Any issue with the building height? 
going not to exceed 35 feet with a maximum up, up to and not to exceed 45 feet. Gives them some leeway. So, because it, it's, currently it's 35. Right. right? Yep. So you can go up to 45? Yeah, if you, up to 45. If you like the design. Yeah, got it. Does that, uh, does Anthony need to, probably not for 10 more feet. I just know in Brantford they built this nine story thing in the center of town and then the fire department had to buy us a ladder truck. To support yeah, that's what I thought. That's the only thing I was worried about yeah. having a volunteer fire department and then do we have our, you can is get, our ladder truck. You can get up that high. Yeah, I did talk to the fire chief and he had no problem with okay. 45 feet. Go. Because I, I think in this discussion last year was I think 55 feet. He was still able to do it. I think 60 was pushing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that they have a pretty good sized ladder truck. So. They like to get tall ceilings in these. Units. Yeah, they you like can do some nice nine, facade nine stuff foot. too with it, you know. Good. So we're going with um, one and a half parking spaces with for each unit with two or more bedrooms. I think we were in our last discussion. We wanted more parking. I think the issue was that when you go to visit, there's not enough parking spaces available. <coughs> and Dave, our regulations say one per 2,500 square feet for small business. Is that what that's referring to? I think that's where I got that from, yes. Okay. <coughs> I have two comments on that. It says parking for small business use. What is, what's small business use? It's less than 10,000 10, square feet. No, I meant small, <coughs> or the, the word, the arbitrary word small. What does small mean? He defines it here. Oh, he does, sorry. okay, sorry. <laughs> um, no larger than 10,000 square feet. Gotcha, I'm sorry, okay. you didn't mention that. The other thing, um, to your point, I think to your point where you were talking about increasing the parking requirements. Increasing the parking requirements. Because I, I like the fact that after that halfway down the paragraph or the mid paragraph, the commission can may reduce any parking requirements. So it almost seems like we should go larger, obviously, to begin with, right? Yeah. And then we can use our discretion, yeah. Because, yeah, to the, it, I mean, I don't have, it, it says it already. If, if there's less demand, then we can make a decision and we'll have less. But you should start out of the gate, start with two. Higher, higher Go with two? Yeah, All right. I would think so. Because we, we can always curtail it. Necessity for um, hookups for electric vehicles or something like this? There's a state statute now in effect that would require that. A, a certain percentage of the spaces would have to be. 10% ten, ten I think uh, after 30, 30 parking spots. Right, I remember we talked about this for yeah. something else. Yeah. So, so if you have 30 parking spots, you gotta have three electric. Right, there's something different about the res. We talked about that with commercial. So, but for, right. That's commercial, but residential, I don't think it would be that far yeah, there, left. I, I don't know what the number is, but there yeah. is a requirement under less. the building code. Mm -hmm. They would have, yeah, they have to go whatever the state says at that mm -hmm. point. One of the things I had. Um, in mind under landscaping for number four and five. Um, it provides a buffer. Um, we always say it's our normal language, evergreens for the buffer, try to maintain 
some of the trees that on site. Uh, we're going with uh, minimum height requirements. Do we want to consider <clears throat> in this regulation to provide a, some kind of visual presentation of the projection of what it would look like five years from the time it starts? So you go in with a six foot tree or it starts out with this blank slate. How do we know what it's gonna look like five years from now with it? Right, what, when we're going says, through, oh, don't worry, so we're gonna plant trees here. Oh, we're 10, gonna plant trees years down here. the road, what's with, that gonna look like? With modern technology we have today, there's no reason why he couldn't, and it goes in conjunction with the lighting aspects. Is there enough lighting? Well, we can, you can give us a plan and it doesn't overlay such and such, but I think for going into the 21st century, I think our regs should project that when the applicant comes in front of us with this proposal, as large as it is, he should be able to be um, prepared to provide a visual presentation of it currently when it, when it starts and five years afterwards, illumination-wise, growth-wise, uh, summer and winter. And then those who are, who have come to object or support it would have a more visual idea of what the project will look like in the future. Mm -hmm. It may help people understand what it would look like. Right, 10 years from now is that tree? 10 years from now, that exactly. Light. I've seen some cluster developments down in uh, New Canaan, Newark, where I, I go every day and I pay attention to that. Some of them you can't see the cluster development from the road. Yeah. It's so well manicured and overgrown and beautiful landscape, you're like, oh, there's something back there. And maybe that's what this regulation should bring forth into whoever comes in front of us saying, this is what I want to do and set up a bunch of plans. I and mean, we all can, not only us, but the public can visually see exactly what the project is entailed instead of a black and white flat 2D model versus a 3D projection. That's fair, right? The only comment I have that, that for me, it's, I, I don't necessarily agree necessarily only because it's putting something very specific on this. You could, you could take that same logic and apply it to everything that comes here. Why this and not others? There's a, you could have a big commercial development, and we're not asking it. That well, no, I think it's probably a good idea across the board. Okay, well, that, that's different. Commercial. I'm looking more at consistency so, yeah. and precedent, and you know, we don't have it for everything. Why, can't, why are we sing, singling this out? Right, and there are so other across towns. the board is different. But another way we also can do it. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that, uh, but also. With bigger developments, you usually have a landscape architect that we can ask questions and challenge, and they don't have visual, but at least they can describe it. So I don't, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I think we should have something more consistent and not, this seems very targeted if we're gonna have it on this and nothing else. That to me seems inconsistent, that's all. Okay, with I mean, I've seen other landscaping plans that say, you know, trees that will grow to X height within yeah. X number of years. And, you know, it's it's not even two-dimensional, it's one-dimensional. Right. Okay. But you know what, a white, we, you know what a white pine's gonna look yeah. like as opposed to a rhododendron, hopefully. Yeah. But to Bob's point, we maybe that's something we should look at holistically, not well, yeah, in a lot that's of just my, 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 that's only my opinion. It seems like we're, we're like putting on, not undo, but we're putting something very specific on a one, one spotted regulation. And it really applies to all our development, not just this one. I mean, a lot of times in site developments, there's a, a nice landscaping plan. And then actually when it's all built out, it doesn't make any sense because the trees under uh, electric wire that they realized was on the plan. And a lot of times they just don't work when you get out in the field. And a lot of times I've taken those landscaping plans and just changed them in the field. And once things are built, you know, it's the last thing that goes into a building. So you can go out and you can play with it. You end up with X number of trees and X number of bushes and let's move them around and put them where it makes sense rather than where some engineer decided to put them. Okay. So my other comment was
Proposal on design elements, number 15, 39-7. Oh, let's see if that's it. Yeah, design. So the little faux pas there, Mr. Dave. Physical site characteristics, design number one, 15-1. Design architectural site designs for multifamily housing district development shall be compatible with physical site characteristics and architecture of the neighborhood. That's pretty broad, huh? True. Do we want to change the word characteristic to something else? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Scott's got me again. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> So with the with the understanding that you know we're have as has been stated so many times a farming community should that be in, injected in somewhere in this design elements to support the word replace the word characteristic because the neighborhood could be just one neighborhood but holistically across the entire town it's a farming community well, can you change characteristics to attributes attributes we could do that attributes that real quick. that's a good word yeah right mm -hmm. all right the other component there was materials colors and detail features. I know, Bill, you don't like to be specific, but I want to be more specific than, than what we're presented here. I like to be specific. I like to be specific. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, we have like four components, A, B, C, and D, yeah. right? Building facades shall include Repeating pattern, color, texture, materials. Predominant exterior materials shall be high quality materials such as brick, wood, sandstone, other native stone or tinted or textured concrete masonry units. So could there be a um, varying combination of high quality meaning longevity ones? I, I think it's just trying to get away from a cinder block building. Yeah. Okay. This is probably not the place to build out this, but we've talked about facade regulations for many, many years. About um, what? F like regulations regarding facades that actually put something specific in our, in our regulations that we could point to. I know this isn't the place to start adding a lot of detail but <clears throat> I, I, mean, well, I was you? thinking like uh, rural attributes or you know you know colonial rural attributes you know for the exterior something why, like that why wouldn't you not want to be specific no, no. here yeah no we, we could definitely i'm just saying i think we long term we want to build out like a, a whole section i don't think yes. it's, this is the place for that but we should add something more here because if we're going to have a 20 unit building, hopefully it looks pretty nice and fits in with our rural attributes of our town. Right? Well, that's right. subjective, right? Would you want to be more specific? Yeah, though? yeah. yeah. Right? Varying roof lines, mm -hmm. textures, varying textures, stone, uh, single shake, yeah. high quality vinyl siding or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's not just. Mm -hmm. You know, a shape type material. But you want to get you want to get the word rural in there. I think that's important. I had country or farming. Country, yeah. As country. A that's a better colonial. I had colonial farming culture. I like country. Um, country, country farm. Yeah, farm. Um, let's see what other my other. I 
And that would be a good conversation to have when we get into the Northford Center conversations after everything else to use it in the Northford Center and the North Brantford Center as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We've got sidewalks in our spec regs now. So only comment I had on this one, Dave, is um, that was number 13, just above design sidewalks. The commission shall require a developer to include contract sidewalks within a site right away street right away along the frontage of lots and shall be constructed via the standards of the town of North Brantford. I was gonna suggest the gov uh, standards of the governing body of the property, which could either be the state of Connecticut or the town of North Brantford, right? Because if we're exiting onto a state route, then it would the state of Connecticut, and they would have to apply for and put the sidewalk within the state right away. To the standards of the town of North Brantford or the state, is that what you're or the saying? state. That works. The minimum of affordable housing 10% is based on a POCD, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, the POCD actually talks Ten. about 20% affordable housing at 50 Clintonville Road done by a not-for-profit company, which is sort of a <laughs> you know, are we going to get enough for profit to come in and do that? Um, yeah. Not for profit doesn't own the property. Correct. I mean, I think we can overcome the POCD issues easily enough. Any other comments, questions? Commissioners on the affordable housing, family, multifamily housing district overlay. So there's nothing in here anymore about open space. We took that out, right? I was. It's been taken out. Whether we did it or I did it or you did it, it's not in here. Yeah, I was looking at that. Uh, there what? is a, there is number. 10, common space shall provide yeah. sufficient common space to all its residents to enjoy the outdoors and recreational activities. The space may include park-like settings, gyms, pools, and outdoor dining, cooking areas. Wasn't something in our regs already for providing that common space? Um, recall the develop, the gentleman that put the building up at the center of Northford? Yeah, well, that was a different regulation yeah, that required right. 150 feet of space for each unit, whether on the ground or in a um, porch. Right. So we're just saying significant common space, so we're leaving off to him to decide? Correct. Why did we get rid of open space? I missed that conversation. I apologize. Was that last meeting? I, you know, I just don't know if it's necessarily important. That one of another box that we checked from the POCD where we we're supposed to increase open, increase open space. We got a lot of open space in North Brantford, but it's part of. I know this is different, but it's part of our other requirements, right, for a normal development under our standard regulation, right? Well, no, it's Either really only required paid in, under subdivisions. Subdivisions, yeah. That's the only time it's yeah, really it's required. So this is not and even the open space necessary. cluster development regulation, it's only required if you're doing single family houses. Okay. If yeah. you're doing a multifamily cluster development, it's it's up to the commission to decide whether they need to do it or not. Okay. Yeah, it was, it's subdivision. 
You're right. <laughs> I was thinking something. Yep. All right. Hi, Commissioner Phil, about not having that in the regulation as not having open space at all. Called out. I'm th we've, we've called out some common space within the development. And I guess the question is, do you want the developer to give you back some more open space for the town by letting him do this for the development? Or should they just be able to do it without giving you open space? That was all I was thinking through. I was some, sometimes with the subdivision, it just doesn't make sense. They give us ten percent of this thing, and it's worthless because it's landlocked. But I was just thinking the Honeywell thing when originally when we had that subdivision, I thought there was a way to link some of this. You know. There is a natural linkage between the open space in that area. Yeah. So I thought if, if like, say this, something like this went in there, and we lost the ability to, to have that, you know, we could now create two areas where it's now this development that we can't make it contiguous anymore. I don't know if we're thinking it right now, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just it, I just mean there's no ability. So if, yeah, if we leave it like that, it's just going to be ten acres of pavement, and it's going. To, I mean, they're going to put the trees wherever you want them, but it's just pretty much it's going to be that Brantford. They're not going to have an open space or a common area. It's just going to be a parking lot with buildings, and that's pretty much it. And then you got to find the people that want just that would want to live there. You know, some people want to area to sit around and do stuff. Some people don't, so. I mean, it's really up to the developer, you know, if they want to invest their money and just put 10 acres of pavement down there and put the houses up there. You know, can it, is can that it, what they want? Can it be something out of discretion? Can we write it in there, like, to not say it's required or not required? I'm just thinking, I'm thinking if there's, again, there's an area where the land trust has this and this and then the yeah. developer comes in and buys this and we have no ability to force anything, we've lost that linkage. And the land trust is trying to link greenway space. Well, and that's your that's your legislative decision right up front right. to say, no, it's not gonna work because it's that, not a suitable location right. for it. Yeah. I just don't know if a, a placeholder in our heads that would, in well, the I think there's, that there's doesn't less... tie it either way, but at least list it so it's in our minds when we're considering it. There was something in here originally that I took out okay. that said provide open space or be near to open space and accessible to open space and not blocking open space. That's where you're coming from, right? Yeah, just, yes. Yeah. Just so we don't lose the ability to connect green space, green waste. That's all I'm looking at. Right. And, and the other point about for the residents too, but I'm, I'm thinking more about the town. <laughs> Not only the green space bill, but the idea of our country atmosphere. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That, was, that was his point, yeah. That was... I don't think we want payment, so let's write it in there what we want. Right. So he knows what we're expecting. Yeah, I, I would think 10%. I mean, when you think about it, when you have 10 acres, one acre of green space, that's nothing. Right. But My, not, I live on an acre. Not, we're, we're not saying that one solid chunk needs to be a square. Yeah, it could be yeah. cumulative. Yeah, yeah, anywhere. Like at the outside area, it could be. Well, you've middle. got the buffer areas. Yeah, they're buffers, yeah. Already built in that are going to create that yeah. space. So um, our guest this evening is Tom Zampano had his hand up. He wants to make a comment from the town council. Welcome, Tom. Thanks. Um, I, I hear the discussion on the open space. Who would, who would be responsible for the open space? The, the open space, would, if, depending on where it is, uh, would be managed by the, by the, um, the developer. If there's a connection to a greenway, 
he should be responsible to maintain it to the, if it is an accessible greenway or, or trail, he should be re responsible. So his, the res, the, uh, the, the, the idea is to get the residents from one point to that greenway. In our previous discussion, I believe he was, there was some kind of path to get to a trail that was already established. And so it was from the, there was some discussion back then of where do people park, how do they get to that, to that open space. If it was on the developer property, how could we get to uh, that green, that green, that green way? So there's been some discussion in the past about we don't want to end, you know, we as a town don't want to end up with no. a piece of, like, I think like the villages, yeah. to get this piece of property now, you know, the, the developer's giving it back to the town. It's, a, it's somewhat useless and the burden's on the town now for this, little, whatever this piece is. Yeah. And yeah. We'd rather, I, mean, I, I would think, you know, we got to keep in mind sometimes we probably want the developer to be responsible for that common area or, you know, and how the, how the taxes are paid on it and so forth and so on and the upkeep. That's all, I, I was just. Yeah, no, you're, you, you've been part of the discussions because I've been a part of them here. It's like they want to give it to the um, land trust, but the land, some of these, the land trust doesn't want them because they're landlocked or <laughs> right. they don't have the ability. But I, I was just, I was viewing it more of if we don't have it, we might lose the ability when there is something useful that we want to connect and we don't have the ability to force anything. <laughs> we, as long as we have something that says, well, hold on a second. We're all for this, but we have beautiful space here and here, and the land trust is interested in this. If we could do it or whatever, or if you maintain it, yeah. so we can have this continuous trail going, because right now you're going to choke it off. Right. It'll, that it'll was be my point. your property. You yeah. have to maintain it. You are a part of this town. Yeah. Or so I'm not. I'm not saying we require it. Just no, I get. I get to, where you're coming from. If it works, we should have the ability to say we we want to create it. And we may say it's worthless, so whatever, we don't require it, right? Or a fee in lieu of? Yeah. Like, to help us make that green yeah. space somewhere else? <coughs> like yeah. the right. subdivision, right? So. Similar to the subdivision language, where it's in, in lieu of, fee in lieu of open space. No, I think, I think you may want to just make a more general comment that the developers should be aware of of the sensitive nature of areas surrounding the development and should contribute to the continuation of greenways or yeah, open like space that. or okay. I mean something like that. Yeah, yeah something, that something exactly like that. Yeah. You don't think we should put something in there to identify specifically the developer providing X I don't percent? think so. No, because what what if they find the you know the one area in North Brantford, there's there's not a green space. Now they have to somehow create a green space like an acre, maybe five, ten, eight, ten acres. Now you have to develop. And yeah, I, I mean I kind of say don't put a percentage, but as long as it has to come to us, we can all agree. Like, does this work or does it not? But the buffer area is a good one, and then having the right, putting a stipulation like Bill said, and it would work. I mean, that's to, to Tom's point. That's what happens sometimes as a subdivision. You give us 10% of it, it's just junk. You know, there's oh, yeah. no, you can't do anything with it. It's in the back. It's landlocked. It's, it's useless, so but the, there's the, no use to it. The so. development needs to be sensitive to the environmental surroundings yes. of the site. I mean, yeah. statements like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Maintaining the country attributes. There you go. Country attributes. Characteristics. <laughs> <laughs> that was your word, attribute. We're using it. Let it go. <laughs> Any other comments on the proposal so far? No. No? Okay. What's the plan to finalize it and then public, have a public area around it? Uh, we're toying with point. various ideas. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll take another stab at yeah. it. And yeah. then um, have another conversation. 
Yeah, I think I can write up some more changes and maybe I'll pass it around to like the um, Economic Development Commission, the Agriculture Commission, different political commissions in town and get some feedback from them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. At this point? Yeah. At this point, sure. Yeah, because we're just toying with the idea of kind of move this ball forward. Yeah, so we can get some other people on board or, or not on board and find out where we want to go. Where does the town feel about it? Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. From a commission point of view. Yeah. From a commission standpoint. Again? You handed out the bylaws? Yeah, we can. Do we need to? What was, um, the, that means the. Uh, do we need to add that? that to the agenda? or? Did the attorney look at it? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything substantial? Should we add it to the agenda now? I can revise the agenda. Are there is nothing substantial that yeah. he changed yeah. at all. Yeah. A couple places it said. Um, Chairman with a lowercase c, and we made it an uppercase oh, c. There's a couple places where it said chair instead of chair. Bob's, Bob's looking for a promotion already. Wow. Capital C. Capital C. And that whole piece about the minute. With the capital C too. About the minute book. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what the hell that means either. Mm, good. Okay. All right. So we'll how about that one out? How about it? It made sense in 1977. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll In the to... hours of the meeting ending at 10.30, he said, that's fine, whatever oh, number okay. you want. All right. So how about we do this? How about uh, I entertain a motion to amend the uh, agenda under other business and add an item uh, to discuss the... Uh, Are you making a can you make a motion? No, I can't make a motion. I'll make the motion. Make the motion. I, I <laughs> move to amend the agenda under seven other business to add a second bullet to review the bylaws of the Planning and Zoning Commission of North Brantford, Connecticut. Do you have a second? A second. A motion, second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Okay. So all the, um, everyone have a copy? Yep. Great. So really nothing new that we haven't seen? Correct. Okay. Yeah, he answered, I answered all the questions that, there's a question about whether if staff's not there, can you still have a meeting? And he said, yeah, of course, you're oh. the commission. You don't need anybody other than you guys. Okay. Good. We uh, still want you here, though. What? We still want you here. I can't even read this stuff without my glasses. Is that T? Oh. That the meeting schedule oh, was the first and third Thursday of the month, except for July, August, and December. So we added, except for July, August, and December, when the meeting will be on the second Thursday of the month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yep. Oh, that's the red change. Okay. Yes, yeah, TA is top attorney. Okay. Took me a while. Gotcha. <laughs> and having the meeting end at 10:30 is fine. Agreed. Okay, good. I was going to say there is a there's an out, right? <laughs> Unless, because I mean, if there's yeah, things, was, uh, right? Yeah, I'm all, all, agree, all in favor. But if we agree to go, first. yeah, that's what that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it makes sense to be like we got to just muscle through it, you know, because right. yeah. it's 
and under Article 10, Section 3, it was something about meetings, site plan meetings, and we just eliminated that because state statute dictates how you handle that anyway. Okay. And then there was the um, Article 11, Section 5, Section C, about running a public hearing and whether you want to have the um, people pro something yeah. speak first in yep. whatever way. He said whatever way you want. If that's okay. the way you want to write it down, that's fine. Fair enough. You know, some chairmen just like to say, let her rip. So we're not bound by any, no. or does this bind us now that we're specifying it? Yeah, it does sort of bind you, but okay. you just follow that procedure. People can still talk afterwards. And commingle, they're still gonna do that, so. Yeah. They'll get mixed up anyway, so. Yeah, okay. It'd be hard to It's kinda... sort of cleaner to have the one okay. group start and another group. Right. Okay. Last one, two more. The town planner, the town planner. He added town to front of planner. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This all right. just really yeah. good. Right. Good. You already talked about that. So somewhere in here it tells you how you can amend the um, amend these. Is that the um, so last the end of it? Thirteen. Last one. These bylaws may be amended by a majority of the commission only after the proposed changes have been read and discussed at a previous regular meeting. Except that the bylaws may be changed at any meeting by the unanimous vote of not less than three members of the commission. <coughs> so I would suggest we put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah, fair enough. Clean, clean version. Version. Yeah, yeah, clean version. Yeah. Okay. And the process is just review, motion, proof, done? Yeah. Okay. It's really just an internal document for us. For us, right? Okay. Thank you. I know. We're going to invent it at this pace. It went so long. <laughs> All right, so it'll be on the agenda for next meeting. But finally, our bylaws. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. I said I said March. <laughs> it's only July. How we getting it done? All right, last uh, next agenda item number eight: town planners report. Anything you want to add, Dave? There is a um, 28th Branford Road. 28th. Across from Rose's. Um, farm stand orchards there was a medical building approved by the commission mm -hmm. four years ago yep. or i believe a forty-four thousand square foot medical building um recently in the last state budget um five million dollars ten million dollars was earmarked for a mental health facility to be built in North Brantford, and that will be the site for the facility. So they are actively seeking permits from us. They originally it was like two buildings and then they came back and said only one and keep one a slab or something. Is it gonna be two now? Yeah, they, they wanna build the two buildings the at the same time. Yeah, so the original and plan. Originally yeah. the 
not originally, the zoning regulations called for 254 parking, parking. spaces and they wanted 172 right. parking spaces. And the commission never formally waived that requirement in the conditions of the motion or anything else. It just sort of was part of the site plan review. And there are a bunch of different numbers and eventually the 172 came out. So the site plan document shows 172 parking spaces. There's another document that shows the ability to construct an additional 60 spaces yeah. to meet the 234. Yeah, I remember that. Um, one of the other conditions was that they get DOT approval to access the site. So any development of that size requiring over 200 parking spaces is a major park, major traffic generator and would require an OSTA review, OSTA review by the DOT. But since it doesn't have 200 parking spaces, it only has 172, oh boy. the developer doesn't think they need that. So currently they're hung up between DOT and DOT because DOT wants to see that 234 parking space number removed from the site plan. DOT wants it? Yeah, they want that number removed from the zoning table on page one. Because they don't want to go through this? No, it breaks 200. Because that's the only way they're gonna let the developer not have to apply. Right. Yeah, right. Even though I've said, they're gonna need a new site plan, they're gonna to have to come back to the commission. It is what it is, it's 172. So, so I'm involved in this conversation. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, I, I, I remember this. I, don't, I didn't remember the specifics of it, 172. Just, just from my own information. So I think I know the answer already because you're kind of articulating it now. Our regulations require X. They have a site plan that we approved for Y, but there's nothing in here that says that we allowed that, but we did approve the site plan. So the site plan is in force. Yeah. Even though there's nothing to say that we recognized and actually approved that in a special. Uh, it should have been. A, it should have been a condition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's no legally that there were held to 172 right now, if, if it was to go forward originally. Mm -hmm. Say that again. It's 172 is what is approved, so that's what they can go by, right? Right. Hmm. I mean, I'm not quite sure why the DOT has an issue with it other than their an administrative function of the government, and that's what they do. So does DOT not want to have to go through this process of them seeking approval, or do, do they? They're just trying to make a, a jurisdictional ruling as to which way they're going to review yeah, okay. it. Because, and I think personally for me, that that's a bad that's a bad area that should have a full full traffic study. <laughs> Office of State Traffic Commission, that's why they're... <laughs> With, without that development, yeah. they should have a traffic so like study if they, there. If there's a loophole here, I'm With concerned, it. you know. We well, I'm not, to... I'm not too worried about it. It's not my problem. Yeah, it's true. Sure it is. It's our problem. Well, it's not... I mean, the town it's, problem. Yeah, well, it's yeah. the town's problem, but it's, it's the DOT's problem to ascertain what they need to do. I just, and to be clear, I'm just concerned if they're, if they're using this 172 loophole because you know, we didn't have any stipulation in there. So they're able to not have to do a full-blown traffic study for a major state road, is that right? That's what you're saying, right? Well, well the- Because OSTA, they're under 200? Yeah, the OST is like a longer process. Yeah and it reaches out to a further distance mm. than just an encroachment permit. 
Yeah. Sounds like a good idea to me. Was there a condition of, I think, didn't you say 60 extra spaces were going to be provided somewhere else? We had, yeah. Site right. plan says 172, and then you, you mentioned something about 60. There was, there was a, a um, site plan that showed the ability to oh. build the other 60 oh. if they were required because something oh. happened. If they were required. Because they found they didn't have enough parking, so they would come back and say. Yeah, it wasn't tied to the slab, because they came back and said, we're only going to do one, and, but we're going to put a slab on the other one and just. No, it was always approved for both of them. It was just so phased. So 172 was for both, okay. Just phased. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Mm. Is that enough spaces for a 44,000 square foot building? Exactly, Scott. That's why they're hung up at 234 where is, or whatever. Where's the stipulation that says you need X amount of spaces per 10,000 square feet? The commission decided. The original approval. I didn't go back and look at the video yeah. and it wasn't even in the minutes, but it said that they demonstrated to the commission yeah. that they didn't need that many spaces. Didn't need, wow. So just so I'm clear, did you say because of this new, no, they're <coughs> using this original site plan, right? Mm -hmm. I thought you said they have to come back. They don't have to come back. No, okay, yeah. Hmm. So this is just happening. What? It's just gonna happen. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I mean, they're, they're ready they, to- They still have to apply to DOT and, and, and meet all their requirements for curb cut into, into 139. It's just they don't need this extra traffic study. Right. Code it, o, what was an OT? OSTA. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know. I do. Office yeah. Street Traffic Commission. Yeah. If you ever look at a stop sign, it says OSTA on the stop sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Little letters on the bottom. Now you know what it means. Do we have any latitude to work with the DOT to say, you know, hey, okay, it's 172, but this is a, I mean, you guys understand what kind of situation this is. This is a bad curb and it's a bad intersection to begin with. Yeah, I, yeah I, that's the way I think they're feeling, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, I know, so look the, at it I know the DOT person fairly well, and she can be tough. Yeah, okay. New, New Haven? Yeah. She's been there for a long time. Yes. No, well, if we're thinking, if I'm thinking of the person. I'm sure you are. Anything else, Dave? No, we have, you know, those other sort of, um, the characteristics zoning regulations that we've talked about, and then there's some just sort of state statute ones that are pretty clean. Yep. And there's a couple of them that I just threw in there about that just need to be cleaned up. Yeah, we have the, the boards and the, uh, the signs. We're talking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can kick that down the road with the Northford study and everything sure. else, but. Okay. With that being said, you don't have anything else? No, I think I'm good. Yeah, me too. Okay, with that being said, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I Unless move, you guys I have anything to it. No, nope. yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, does you guys have anything else to add, say? No, no. Okay. I move to adjourn. May I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Uh, all right, all right, thank you. This thus concludes the planning and zoning meeting for it is July, July 13th, August 17th. We're halfway done, almost.